Hi, I'm with my friend Shapur from uh, Sony. He is one of the two cell support engineers that work for Sony, uh, supporting the entire line of professional cameras in North America. And he's here today with his newest baby, the FX9. Now, the FS7 and FS7 Mark II were two of the most popular cameras, obviously, that Sony, I think, professional cameras that they've ever produced. And this new FX9 is designed to build upon that success in many, many ways. I think one of the first and foremost differences is really in the imager. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the changes are in that imager? Sure, thanks, Brian. So uh, obviously the FX9, uh, as you mentioned, we built up on the success we did with our one of our best most popular camera, FS7 and FS7 Mark II, as far as being a running gun and uh, ergonomically very versatile uh, camcorder. But we also wanted to add some of the other technologies that we had, uh, for example, from our uh, Venice camera, based on the knowledge base we learned from our color science on Venice camera, uh, we actually have that more of the cinematic uh, look in the default picture profile of this camera. At the same time, it's a full frame 6K sensor as well as dual base ISO. So it's very useful when you're shooting in a dark situation plus the uh, daylight either with 800 or 4000 ISO that it gives you ability to shoot in a very, very low light situation with a uh, much, much quiet and less noise. But also borrowing technology from our other side of the camera, alpha cameras. We have the best autofocus system in alpha cameras in, in our alpha lineup. And we have now that technology also in the FX9. It has the hybrid fast autofocus, which both calculates the, uh, the phase and contrast on top of a lot of AI and uh, intelligence calculation to do the fast and accurate and responsive autofocus. Uh, so those are from our different line, but also we wanted to keep the same ergonomic which was very received with the FS7. So lots of it, it's very similar ergonomically to FS7, but we even went further and we kept the good parts, but we also improved on lots of things that people wish they had on FS7. Uh, having better ergonomically designed uh, uh, grip, basically, and having like four channel audio control on the side of the body, having the volume control, having the multi-functional uh, dial that it lets you access a lot of the camera setting uh, where in FS7 you had to go deep down in the menu to change those. So make it easier basically listening to people uh, with the feedbacks they had, what they wish they had on FS7, we added it on FX9. Excellent. So uh, one of the things you touched on there was, again, the noise floor of this sensor because the sensor is a larger sensor, obviously, being full frame, and it's a 6K sensor. Yeah. So basically, you're oversampling the image and basically still recording a 4K signal, but through that oversampling, you're getting better color, better resolution, and also because the pixels are larger thanks to the larger size of the sensor, exactly. they're a little bit more open, so a little less noise. And now you also have the dual base ISO so that you can run at both 800 and 4000 right. and still have the full dynamic range of the imager, but um, again, at either setting, but again, maintain that lower noise floor. Correct. So 15 stop plus dynamic range and you still can run the camera both in the 4000 base ISO or 800 ISO. Uh, you can still do S-Log, s gametry that white gamut, uh, color gamut of the every other cameras that we had, you still have the same workflow in here, so you can run S-Log at 15 plus, which gives you the most flexibility in the post. But also because we have this new sensor with the, with the new color science, we're able to have more of the baked in 709 cinematic look for it of the box with the default picture profile. So the both workflows are available, S-Log, uh, S-Cinetone, uh, for more flexibility or you can have a baked in cinematic look out of the box with the 709 uh, S Cinetone. Yeah, I think that's one of the things uh, for, for many years, um, people thought that Sony cameras out of the box kind of looked a little bit too video-ish. And uh, so people would go into the profiles and make some adjustments and whatnot. So basically this new cinema profile 
um, basically eliminates that need that you can just basically pick up the camera, run and gun with it, have some really good looking pictures that you can just do a little bit of manipulation and post on, just like you would with a normal video type file. But um, then you also have the S-Log capability and obviously with also the back as well, you can move into raw capability as well in the future. Exactly. So uh, again, we, we listen all the time to people and our customer and the need they have. So uh, S-Log is the most flexible, but as you mentioned, you can have that flexibility to just pick up the camera on the standard uh, gamma look. And lots of uh, effort went into, it, uh, into this from our engineers looking at Venice. Again, we learn a lot from the Venice, our successful flagship camera. And they went in there and tweaked the sensor to create that look as close as possible to Venice color uh, science and look that it has. Right. Uh, and then as far as the RAW you mentioned, yes, this camera will do in the future a 16-bit RAW outputs, which... So, and you need this back unit to so do that. Correct. So that's the XTCA FX9, which allows you to record 16-bit RAW externally. Well, obviously, a few people have announced that capability, but it's that's a future product as Correct. well, to have that third-party recorder. It's going to be the next firmware update, and it's, it's going to require a third-party uh, RAW recorder externally. Okay, the one other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was um, the variable ND. This is the first camera to have a full frame variable ND. And although it was introduced previously on the FS7 Mark II, um, I think there's still a lot of people who don't quite understand the benefits of having a variable ND as opposed to a fixed ND. Great question. The variable ND filter, it opens a lots of possibility. There are, there are scenarios that you, you go into different uh, lighting situation, you go in from indoor and outdoor constantly. Uh, not only the ability to dial your ND exactly how much ND you would need. So generally on a camera that has a ND dial uh, or you put external ND, you have a few sets, you have like a quarter ND, 116, 164, whatever, a few, two or three step ND. But what if you need something in between? It's not the right amount of ND that you need. With variable ND filter, you can actually dial anything from two to seven stop, from quarter ND to 1 over 128, and dial as much ND as you want. The other beautiful thing that you could do with this is there's an auto variable ND, so you can actually have the camera adjust and expose for you based on the ND filter. Some of the great examples on the videos that we shot recently, uh, uh, think of it, you're doing the time lapse, which this camera is capable of doing time lapse, and we were doing sunset or sunrise. Wow. And we set the camera to auto ND and let the camera adjust for you. And we were going over two hours and 40 minutes and recording time lapse on this camera. And the ND would take over for us and, and adjust. And combined it. with the uh, dual base ISO, you exactly. can run at a higher ISO. So exactly. even as you're getting into that darker light after sunset, exactly. you're still going to get. Uh, very, very nice, noise. very quiet, low noise in an almost pitch dark situation at 4000 ISO. And you can switch easily with, uh, between the 800 and 4000 ISO with an assignable switch on the camera. Very easy to switch. And combination with auto ND, that's a perfect example of where you can use it. But again, there are situations that you need to move from location to location for different lighting and different area that you, you let the camera either adjust it for you or you can easily dial in the amount of yeah. ND you And want. you're maintaining that depth of field. You're not, you're thinking, your depth of field is not drifting in and out. Your focus is not drifting in and out. That's a really great feature. Um, some other things about the camera, obviously it's an E-mount, just exactly like the FS7. Um, but there's, because you can switch the sensor, um, into both a Super 35 mode or a, the full frame mode, you can now use any type of E-mount lens, whether that was um, a Super 35 only lens or the full frame type lensing. And then also, if you're using the same lens, it can you can actually extend the lens. Or Correct. in other words, you can just switch to the other mode Correct. and now the lens will become longer. Exactly, and there, there are tons of lenses available out in the market. One of the advantage of having E-mount is you're flexible as far as, as far as what kind of lensing you want to use in front of it because E-mount is only 80 millimeter flange depth. Uh, you can adapt it to any and every kind of lens. That being said, uh, at Sony we have now the one mount system from our Alpha camera, our APS-C Alpha all the way to Venice camera, they use natively at E-mount. Uh, and you can use a lot of E-mount lenses, our G-Master lenses and the G lenses uh, are 
great, great performing glass that we manufacture and design in-house with Sony that opens up lots of possibility that you could go directly on it and get advantage of uh, the autofocus and lots of other uh, feature sets those lenses have. But you're also flexible to use PL lenses, cinema lenses, B4 lenses, any lenses that they're in the market is adaptable to EMA. And that's advantage of having 18 millimeter flange that you could basically put an adapter and spacing and make the uh, focal length that you need. Um, the other thing that you had mentioned uh, earlier in the seminar, we talked a little bit about um, the autofocus and the fact that obviously the Sony lenses have new technology and many of the G Master and whatnot lenses that allow that speed of autofocus to be very, very high speed. Uh, with third party lenses, you will be able to have autofocus, but again, the speed might be a little bit different. So, correct. So, the autofocus algorithm uh, that we have. Um, as you know, like uh, alpha lenses are the fastest autofocus uh, systems in the market now. But it's not just a sensor, it's the sensor, the processing, and also the actual lens performance. Because we design everything at Sony from our lenses to our sensor and processing, everything is done in-house. They work very well together and uh, they can communicate with each other. So it's not just one part to it. Uh, think of this, our uh, A7R Mark IV and the newer A9 uh, Mark II, uh, they do 60 calculations per second, and there's layers and layers of information and calculation, the phase, the contrast, uh, the AI, and the, uh, there's a lot of calculation and our algorithm goes into that autofocus system. Now, uh, also mechanically, our focus actuator, the new generation of G Master lens, our linear focus actuator, which works much, much faster. So in other words, if you have an old 30-year-old technology in your lenses and lots of the other lenses that they're in the market, the autofocus will eventually get there, but it's mechanical uh, movement of the optics and the gears that they go in there, which takes time. But if you have brand new uh, linear motors, the nearest technology in there that they move so fast and they do calculation, when it talks to the actual sensor and processing, make that process much, 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 much faster because several layers of calculation is going in there and it's achieving the autofocus. So you'll eventually get there, but it works much, much faster with our Sony lenses. And the other thing that was great was uh, you were explaining about the face technology and that you can actually track and store faces to be able to find. Uh, the last thing I want to just talk about is a few of the connectors on this side of the camera. Uh, just a couple extra connections that are there. It also, the camera has a built-in time code, Genlock. There's a different multi-connector that allows the remote control to have a little bit faster functionality. Correct. So uh, the, these are the improvements over the FS7. Again, we, we have Genlock and time code in and out, uh, move to the body of the camera. So you no longer require a breakout box in the back to do that. So it's part of the camera. Also, the, the response of the grip, uh, the whole grip was redesigned ergonomically to be better balancing, but also the, the new connection, multi-connection, make it much, much f more faster respond communicating, communicating between the grip and the camera itself. Excellent. Uh, uh, there's also a 12 GSTI output as well as 3G, so there are a lot of new interfaces in this camera. And one last point is I wanted to talk about the, the viewfinder itself. There's been some improvements there. Um, the viewfinder is a sharper panel, and some, so it's a higher resolution. Great and point. Yeah, so it's an HD, much, much better resolution than uh, FS7 viewfinder, as well as the, op the optics are um, better quality, uh, much nicer optics. In, in addition, also mechanically, it's a loop. Uh, slash sunshade, so this slides out, and you have in one piece you have both sunshade and the loop all in one. Where in FS7 you have to have two separate pieces or third party pieces to achieve that. So, and two last points was just uh, the camera is also recording GPS for stabilization built in, and also you were showing this a great little app where you're getting a little remote control, and the camera was actually streaming over Wi Fi to this little app. Correct. So, so as far as the, uh, there is a gyro sensor uh, in the camera that's recording the gyro information on every frame as a metadata. So uh, in, uh, in November, we're going to have uh, a new version of the Catalyst Pros, uh, which is a free uh, software management uh, utility software from Sony that you can download. Uh, with the metadata information that is recorded from the gyro and records the movements of the camera in every frame, you can go in the post in Catalyst Bras and you can stabilize. 
and you can select the amount of stabilization that you want in Amazing. there. Amazing. Uh, because you have the gyro information, it makes the process much, much, much faster. There are existing NLEs out there that they would have to go analyze the, the uh, image and then perform the stabilization. Mm -hmm. Where if you have the gyro information in there, the information is there. All the software has to do is just process that information and do the civilization. So it's very cool uh, to do that. And uh, one, what was the other? Oh, the Sorry. little app. You were showing us the little app too that had the Wi-Fi control of the uh, of the camera. Okay. So it was actually seeing the picture and actually controlling all of the different Correct. menu settings. So the current uh, content browser mobile app, which works with lots of our XD cam, it, it allows you to control and monitor the camera. Uh, on your smartphone or tablet. The newer version that's going to come out this month, uh, it, it'll, it'll essentially acts the same, but it gives you a lot more control than the previous version that will allow you to change ISO, white balance, zoom, iris, uh, lots of different parameters. You can monitor the clips, view the clips, and uh, all of that through the app as well uh, as a tool. Well. Great, I think that's a really quick uh, little overview for today that gives you an update on a few different points. Thank you very much for watching and uh, thank you Shapur for coming up and visiting us. Thanks so much, thanks for having us.